SpaceX has investigated connecting starships together in space to generate a sort of artificial gravity for passengers on multi-month flights between planets, as well as converting whole starships into all-in-one orbital observatories with a magnitude greater than the Hubble. Let us find out today about this amazing SpaceX discovery. So let's dive right into this video to find out. But before, don't forget to subscribe to this channel so you never miss an update. Before diving in, let us talk about the concept. The idea goes all the way back more than a century with Konstantin Tsiolkovsky, one of the founding fathers of rocketry and aeronautics, providing the first recorded demonstration. He presented a research titled Investigation of Outer Space Rocket Devices in 1903, in which he proposed employing rotational force to create artificial gravity in space. Since then, several versions of this concept including the Von Braun wheel, the O'Neill cylinder and the Stanford Taurus have been proposed for space stations and habitats. Some designs, such as NASA's Nautilus X space station, which would employ a revolving Taurus to provide artificial gravity, and the Gateway Foundation plan for a commercial space station, are even being examined for development. Small stars came up with the idea for the GLS after performing some research on centripetal force. The GLS is essentially a hub ship, similar to a wheel hub, with a truss filling the payload bay. As a result, they are acting as spokes on a wheel. It would be positioned between two passenger ships and would communicate with them throughout the six-month travel to Mars. Small stars not only detailed the system, but also completed the calculations required to establish the construction of a truss and the velocity required to recreate Earth's normal gravity. Using spin calculator, he found that a rotating rate of 31 meters per second would be sufficient for a system with a radius of around 100 meters, delivering the sensation of 1 G and doing approximately three spins each minute. When the passenger ships were connected, they would spin around to reposition themselves and use their thrusters to give momentum to the wheel. Once enough velocity had been generated to replicate Earth's normal gravity, which is 9.8 meters per second squared, or 1G, the passenger ships would rearrange themselves to face inward toward the hub ship. Those on board the passenger ships would feel dragged down for the rest of the journey as a result of the centripetal force caused by the wheel's rotation. According to small stars, the system is as follows. The gravity link starship design offers a rotational gravity that reuses the main engines, accesses leftover fuel, and eliminates impractical space building and spacewalks. The GLS is essentially a hub ship, similar to the hub of a wheel. Instead of personnel and cargo, the GLS payload bay is packed with truss that can robotically fold out and lock into place to serve as the wheel spokes. Plenty is known about the long-term effects of microgravity exposure, thanks in large part to studies undertaken by astronauts on board the International Space Station. Muscle loss, bone density loss, decreased organ function, vision loss, changes in cardiovascular strength, and even genetic mutations are examples of these. These are facts that astronaut Scott Kelly can attest to. He found readjusting to life on Earth hard after spending a year in space as part of NASA's twin study, as detailed in his book Endurance. To avoid such health problems, before astronauts even reach deep space destinations such as the Moon or Mars, where the long-term effects of low G are unknown. This was the concept. At least some of the members of the physics community, according to Saul Perlmutter, already investigating the potential of employing Starship as a sort of foundation or spacecraft bus capable of carrying and operating massive scientific payloads. While Starship has already been proposed for use as a launch platform for key future missions, this notion would see Starship serve as the spacecraft itself. Musk addressed a number of insightful and interesting things in a recent sequence of tweets that he responded to earlier today, which provides more details about the stainless steel spacecraft. The CEO, Elon Musk, responded to a fan's question on the idea of tying another starship to a launch in order to produce artificial gravity. Musk said yes, hinting that it might be a company plan and that it could happen shortly when the starship is cleared for its missions 
following a series of testing. The anchored spacecraft and launch would contribute to the creation of artificial gravity, which would aid in the stabilization of the Starship en route to Mars, allowing for a more successful journey. SpaceX and its CEO have not been clear about the methods they will employ to launch the Starship. And the possibilities are unlimited because there are so many different approaches or moves. Starship has yet to enter space or orbit as of 2021, but SpaceX is close to achieving that goal. Starship will eventually, perhaps in a few years, have successfully launched two and operated in orbit dozens, if not hundreds of times, and will have matured into a mature and reliable spacecraft. At that point, it wouldn't be out of the question to entrust starships to serve as long-term scientific spacecraft, utilizing a bus that could provide ample power, propulsion, thermal management, navigation, and communications capabilities to any hosted payloads. This includes, among other things, drastically modifying starships on the ground to form gigantic space stations. For Starship, orbital refueling might easily allow SpaceX to reduce the crewed Earth-Mars transit duration to 100 days or less, exposing people to substantially less microgravity than those who crew the International Space Station. The value proposition of artificial gravity for three months long journeys is most likely the extensive complexity and adjustments required to make such a device operational. Given the Starship's low construction cost, 9 meter, 30 foot diameter, and nominal ability to deliver at least 100 metric tons, or 220,000 kilograms, of payload to low Earth orbit, huge observatories and research instruments are not out of the question. Perhaps more importantly, significantly reduced payload constraints, by more than an order of magnitude compared to the Hubble or James Webb telescopes could enable significant innovation in spacecraft instrument design, radically lowering costs while improving reliability, redundancy, and performance. Regardless, Musk notes very offhandedly that SpaceX had explored the concept, but he doesn't disclose whether the business finally decided to drop the subject or study it further. Fingers crossed, this is an exciting concept. We are eager to find its implementation. That was it for today. Hope you liked this video. Make sure to subscribe to our channel for more updates. Thank you for watching. Until next time. SpaceX is an astonishing achievement, but uh, you've also got your plans for Mars. Think about the future. It's just if, if we're out there exploring stars, it's so much more exciting and inspiring than one where we are forever confined to Earth. Yeah, so uh, in order to make Mars work, we, we need kind of the next generation of, of rockets and spacecraft. So we think we've got something that will enable people to move to Mars for approximately half a million dollars.